The 19th of September 2552, a damaged and beleaguered ship of the UNSC Navy drops out of slip space into a seemingly random system in uncharted space. The UNSC Pillar of Autumn has just made a jump into the Soel system and unfortunately has found a hostile Covenant fleet waiting for it. But the crew also discovers something else, something that may very well change the very tide of the war. But sadly, for the vast majority of the cruiser's crew, he will not live to see that change. In the year 2494, a splinter group of outer colonists, calling themselves simply the Insurrection, has started a campaign against the centralized government of humanity, the United Earth Government, or UEG. Portions of outer colonists were disappointed with the bureaucracy and heavy-handedness of the UEG's control over the colonists, and sought their own sovereignty from the UEG's oversight. What began as peaceful protests soon devolved into acts of violence, and then terrorism, finally boiling over into an all-out war. The UEG's military power, the United Nations Space Command, or UNSC, soon found itself embroiled in a full-blown war. It quickly needed to update and enlarge its navy, with more capital ships to bring the outer colonies back underfoot. In 2505, the Halcyon-class cruiser was developed and designed by Dr. Robert McLees. The Halcyon-class was a class of light cruiser, the smallest vessel to receive the classification of cruiser. The vessels were 3,841 feet, or 1,171 meters in length, 1,154 feet, or 352 meters at the beam, and 1,305 feet or 398 meters tall. The armament was rather anemic and far less hefty than other cruisers of the time, sporting only a standard magnetic accelerated cannon, or MAC, as well as four Shiva nuclear missiles, six Archer missile pods, and a number of M910 50mm point defense chain guns. They carried a small air wing of five GATL-1 longsword fighter bombers and the ship was powered by a Mark II Hanley Messer Deuterium Fusion Reactor, or DFR. Despite its small size and lack of substantial offensive capabilities, the Halcyon-class cruisers were extremely slow and unwieldy. This was due to one of the few strong suits of the vessels. Interlaced through the ship was a reinforced honeycomb structure of support beams and braces that bolstered the structural integrity. The vessel thusly weighed up to 9 million metric tons but could take an impressive amount of damage, some having as much as 90% of their titanium A hull plating being burned or blasted off and still remaining combat effective. But the main issues remained. The ships were slow and extremely expensive to produce. After only 10 were built in this fashion, the ship's design was reformatted without the cross bracing to reduce unit costs and increase the ship's maneuverability. But even with these lighter models, the ship still underperformed being more useful as over-glorified transports as opposed to frontline combat vessels. Along with their crew of around 1,000 sailors, they carried a full complement of around 800 Marines and about 400 specially trained Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, or ODSTs. As far as vehicles for the Marine Battalions, they carried 60 M12 FAV Warthogs, 20 M808B main battle tanks, and 216 M8823 SOEIV drop pods for the ODSTs. The Marines and their equipment could be shuttled to the surface using the ship's two D-96 Albatross dropships or its 12 D-77 Pelican dropships. Many of the Halcyon saw a drastically foreshortened service life, being decommissioned not too long into the Insurrectionist War, but the vast majority would be reactivated out of necessity. For in 2525, humanity would have its first contact with a conglomerate of alien races known as the Covenant. This first contact quickly devolved into an all-out war, one that seemed motivated towards the all-out genocide of humanity by the alien Covenant. Humanity was greatly outmatched in terms of technology. Their fleets completely decimated in almost every single engagement with the Covenant's fleet. Humanity was losing ships at an alarming rate, and it was deemed necessary to reactivate old vessels such as the Halcyons. One such vessel, the subject of this video, was the UNSC Pillar of Autumn. The Pillar of Autumn was of the early reinforced design, and was built in the Ray's McLee shipyards on Mars. Laid out in 2507, completed in 2509, she was launched and commissioned into the UNSC Navy on December 1st, 2510. 
She served a rather unastounding service life during the Insurrectionist War, and would do nothing of note until her service in the Human Covenant War. During the Battle of Arcadia in 2531, the alien juggernaut had been destroying and burning human colonies for six years straight. The Autumn and a UNSC battle group were able to hold off a Covenant fleet of two massive CCS-class supercarriers for a decent amount of time until a UNSC carrier could arrive to assist. They even managed to destroy one of the carriers, but to the loss of nearly half of the human force. The Autumn was heavily damaged in the engagement, but as a testament to the fortitude of the Halcyon class, she survived. The Autumn was decommissioned after the battle and put into permanent storage pending scrapping. That was until 2550, when she was refit and reactivated into full service out of desperation. Around this time, on 25 August 2552, Pillar of Autumn was selected for a secret mission. The mission was named Operation Red Flag, a last-ditched, desperate mission to force the Covenant to capitulate. After 27 years of hard fighting against a losing war, humanity had lost nearly two dozen worlds, and it was only a matter of time before they faced extinction. Red Flag was a plan to capture a Covenant vessel using UNSC Special Forces, use the vessel to sneak into Covenant-controlled space, and capture one of the Covenant's hierarchs, known as the Prophets. The plan was bold, and required a sturdy vessel such as the reinforced Halcyons. The Autumn was selected and put through an extensive refit and modernization. Her sluggish Mark II Hanley Master DFRs were replaced with the new Boglin Fields Starfire Fours. She was given an additional 300 Archer Missile Pods, 50 more M910 50mm chain guns, 3 Havoc nuclear warheads, 8 Mark 33 Spitfire naval coil guns, and 6 M66 Sentry autocannons. But most importantly, she was given an entirely new fusion reactor that bumped her energy production to far in excess of her previous iteration. The capacitors for her Mac gun were bolstered to allow her to fire three of the hard-hitting shells in one quick burst, essentially knocking out most any Covenant vessels she faced with just one burst. On top of this, she was outfitted with an advanced data processing core to allow her to house an experimental smart AI, which would be essential for Operation Red Flag. The 42-year-old light cruiser had received a facelift and a second chance at life. A Captain Jacob Keyes was selected to be her captain for Red Flag. The 57-year-old captain had served in the UNSC Navy for 35 years and received numerous distinctions for victories in the face of impossible odds. On board the vessel, along with its standard complement of 1,200 Marines and ODSTs in the 79th Infantry Battalion, a large amount of Special Forces units called Spartans were attached for Red Flag. These super soldiers were genetically augmented and equipped with the very best equipment to handle any situation, and were successful in countless engagements with the Covenant, always coming out on top despite impossible odds. Red Flag was looking to be a huge win for humanity, but whether or not it would have been a success was never to be discovered. On July 24th, 2552, the planet Reach was invaded by the Covenant. Reach was a stronghold world within the inner colonies. It was also relatively close to Earth, being said to be at Earth's doorstep. The planet was a centralized staging point for the UNSC's military, and was home to large portions of the Navy and Marines, and was even home of the Spartan program. It was therefore of vital importance to humanity. If it was lost, not much stood in the way of the Covenant in their final goal, Earth. Therefore, its defense was deemed a priority over Operation Red Flag. Captain Keyes reluctantly committed his Spartans to the defense of the planet, as he utilized the Pillar of Autumn in the defense of Reach's fleet. Even putting the ship up against an advanced Covenant sniper ship that was whittling away the UNSC defense fleet one ship at a time. The Autumn sustained damage, but took out the superior Covenant ship and stayed in the fight. But after a protracted defense, Reach was slowly but surely overrun by the Covenant. Keyes was able to retrieve only two of the Spartan super soldiers, one of which was medically dead and frozen in cryosleep. The Covenant, set to reducing the surface of Reach to glass, like so many human colonies before it. The captain realized that Red Flag would no longer be possible, and it was deemed necessary to protect the ship, the AI on board, and ultimately, the location of Earth. On August 30th, 2552, the ship's AI, an experimental smart AI named Cortana, was tasked with plotting a random jump away from Reach. Unknown to the captain, she did so utilizing a set of coordinates she had found left over by a long-dead alien race. The Autumn jumped, 
damaged from her engagement and followed by a fleet of Covenant ships, the fleet of particular justice. The Pillar of Autumn reached her destination on 19 September 2552, three weeks later. She came out of slip space in a system called the Soel system, near a gas giant called Threshold. Unfortunately, the Superior Covenant ships had beaten them there and were waiting for them as they passed around the gas giant. They were engaged by recon patrols just 20 minutes after exiting warp. But what the Autumn's crew hadn't expected was the discovery of a massive ring-like structure in orbit around Threshold. The massive structure, 10,000 kilometers in diameter, was apparently not of any known design and was in fact a religious artifact revered by the deeply religious and fanatical Covenant. In fact, so protected was the ring world that they called Halo that one of the high-ranking prophets aboard the Covenant fleet demanded that the alien ships cease fire for fear of damaging the sacred ring by accident. This stroke of luck allowed the Pillar of Autumn, assisted by the onboard AI Cortana, to take out four enemy vessels. But the Covenant wouldn't simply let the human ship pick their fleet apart. They dispatched attack fighters and boarding ships to the Halcyon cruiser to attempt to take over and destroy the vessel from within. Before long, a massive ship-wide firefight broke out on the vessel as the Marines aboard fought to repel Covenant borders with varying levels of success. Unfortunately, the Covenant were successful in taking out the fire control center for the ship's MAC, rendering the ship essentially defenseless. Captain Keyes was left with few options. Protocol dictated that he couldn't allow the ship or the smart AI to fall into Covenant hands. He ordered the ship's remaining combat effective Spartan, a Master Chief Petty Officer John 117, to take possession of the ship's AI. He then would order an abandonment of the ship and plot a course for the vessel to crash land on the ring world. With the sudden change of course towards the sacred ring, the Covenant pursued, now no longer holding fire, but attempting to destroy the human ship before it could desecrate the holy relic. The ship took several substantial hits as a crew evacuated aboard Bumblebee lifeboats, Pelican dropships, and ODST SOE IV drop pods. But owing to the Halcyon's stability and integrity, she held together, even as plasma torpedoes burned away hull plating and the ring's artificial atmosphere superheated her hull. The vessel crash landed on the ring, digging a massive trench in its surface. It came to rest largely intact. Portions of her hull scorched to cinders, but otherwise in one piece. Even the ship's reactor was in fully working condition, but unfortunately, due to the construction of the vessel, she wasn't designed for in-atmosphere flight. She was in her final resting place. A drawn-out three-day battle began over the ring world. A large majority of the human crew had made it to the surface and had started a guerrilla campaign against the Covenant, who seemed to be attempting to take control of the massive installation, the reason soon being discovered why. The Covenant not only worshipped the ring, but believed it to be a massive superweapon. It was soon discovered that they were correct, but not in the sense that they had believed. Housed on Halo for research was a parasitic life form known only as the Flood. This alien infection used living biomass to expand and infect everything in its path, killing whoever it infected, mutating them, and adding their consciousness to its hive mind. It escaped and spread like wildfire across the ring, infecting humans and Covenant alike. The ring had been built initially to stop the Flood by eradicating all life in the galaxy. The determination was made that the Flood and Halo had to be destroyed at all cost. The UNSC Pillar of Autumn had one last mission to fulfill. The ship's remaining Spartan, John 117, boarded the vessel along with Cortana and set to overloading the ship's still functional reactor core. The ship's massive fusion reactor would generate immense amounts of heat, which was cooled by an advanced cooling system. By disabling the cooling system, the core would overload and go critical, essentially making the reactor become a supernova. The Special Forces soldier was able to do this, causing the reactor to go critical. He then escaped with the AI in an M12 Warthog, driving down a really cool 3km long track on board a 1km long ship. He boarded one of the surviving longsword fighter bombers inside of the ship and escaped the ring world in the nick of time. He and a handful of Marines and the medically dead Spartan were the only individuals in the Pillar of Autumn complement of 2,200 to survive. The Covenant were dealt a crippling defeat and were forced to retreat. The Pillar of Autumn, in her death, had saved all of humanity and perhaps 
the entire galaxy. Yay! <laughs> April Fools! I really hope you enjoyed this special April 1st edition of Maritime Horrors. I really just had to do this seeing as one of the things I love just as much as Maritime History is the Halo series. If you're a fan of Halo and found this video because of that, I thank you for watching, but keep in mind this is, first and foremost, a history channel. So please do not expect more like this one. Um, but who knows? Maybe if it gets enough support, maybe I'll do another like it. I, I really enjoyed making this. But if you liked it, definitely like and subscribe and share it with your friends. I'll be back with another normal ship this Sunday. But thank you so much for watching, and remember, remember Reach. And fair winds and following seas to you, shipmates.